If you have been to Chomp in the years past, then you might be familiar with Patty Pan. Now, what I did not know about Patty Pan is that it is run by Deborah Gardenstein, and I'm probably saying that last name all wrong, might be Gardenstein, but Deborah, I actually met uh, during a webinar about farmer's markets. Very random, very awesome. Well, we do miss the smell of all the fresh veggies that would be cooking on the grill at Miramore, but we're excited to have Devra, Patty Pan's founder, with us to talk about families of vegetables and how you can prepare a few. If you're craving Patty Pan, there's home delivery for you available, as well as some on-site selling at some farmer's markets around town. You can check out pattypan.coop, that is P-A-T-T-Y-P-A-N dot C-O-O-P, for more information. Hey, I'm Dev. I am the founder and one of the owners of Patty Pan Cooperative. We are a thoughtful, progressive food business located in Shoreline, Washington. We do everything from farmer's market concessions when we can, to catering, to uh, home meal delivery. And today I'm just gonna show you a bunch of vegetable families because vegetables, like people, grow in families. So the first vegetable family I'm gonna talk about is the brassica family. Uh, they include broccoli, cauliflower, cabbages, a lot of really hardy leafy greens like kale and collard greens. They're also known as cruciferous vegetables because when they get big, the stalks split, and they split in a cross pattern. So here is kale. We have a couple of different kinds. This is a curly green kale. Once upon a time, you only saw kale in salad bars, and you know, not the part that you eat, the part that you decorate with the ice. This is a red curly kale, very similar to the green curly kale but it's a little more delicate, you know, when you have a box of the dark green and a box of the red, and you open them up, the red is more likely to look like it's had a bad hair day. You know, it's just like smashed on top, because it's more delicate. The stems are pretty burly, so if you want to get the leaves away from the stem, you just hold like that. This is black kale, even though it's not black. It's also known as dino kale, lacinato kale, Tuscan kale. It's a kale with many names. This is a red Russian kale, named red for the purple vein. And these are collard greens, which really are very similar to kale. And like kale, you can get the stems out of them like that. And my favorite thing to do with these is just chop them up, saute them with a little bit of olive oil and some garlic, and then you can add something acidic at the end, like lemon juice or balsamic vinegar, and it's just really, really tasty. Green cabbage is also a brassica. Brussels sprouts are um, really like tiny cabbages. So cut it in half, and then Looks like a tiny version of the same thing. Which I used to take cabbage for granted, and now I just think it's one of the more wonderful vegetables around. You can do so much with it. Uh, it's wonderful cooked in just about anything. You make slaws, shred it up, and just season it with whatever. This is a Napa cabbage, which is the best kind for kimchi. These are bok choy cabbages, baby bok choy, grown up bok choy. They're really just the same plant, one's older than the other, so it's grown to be bigger. And the main reason I use the baby bok choy is because this is a lot of food. I rarely use it all in a single meal, and this is just, you know, start to finish, you got your vegetable. This is broccolini which is a variety of broccoli with a stem that's more tender 
than the broccoli that we most commonly eat. And you notice here, it's flowering. And, you know, a lot of these plants, because they're cousins, when they're growing, they look really similar to each other. Like kale, at a certain point in its growth cycle, is going to sprout these same kinds of yellow flowers. Collard greens, very similar to the leaves that you find on cauliflower and broccoli, pretty closely related. This is a kohlrabi. Kohlrabi is like a cabbage, except it's solid. You can eat this raw or cooked. You can grate it up. You can make slaw out of it. This is a turnip. This is a rutabaga. Turnip is an ancient vegetable. They were eating it in Roman times. Rutabaga is really only about 200 years old, and a rutabaga is actually a cross between a cabbage and a turnip. Go figure. The next vegetable family I'm gonna talk about are the alliums, or the onion family. And they're actually uh, cousins of lilies. So you're an allium, lily, they uh, come from the same root. Here you have a conventional, standard, everyday onion. Here you have the same vegetable, much younger. So you see you have the stems here, they're really fresh. You can cut them up and use them like the way you use green onions. These are fresh red onions. They just have a much brighter flavor. Here's a shallot, which is kind of somewhere between an onion and a garlic. This is a fresh shallot. It's garlic. Beautiful red garlic. A lot of people find leeks intimidating to work with because they have a lot of dirt in them. And the trick is you just gotta know where to find the dirt in them. It tends to be in the outer layers right around where the light green part meets the darker green part. The best way to cut and clean a leek is take off the top, then you cut it a little bit off the end Cut it in half lengthwise, and then you find the dirt. So it's just in those outer layers. And so you want to rinse it after you cut it lengthwise. Keep it together more as much as you can when you rinse it, because if you just separate it out, you know, it kind of starts to curl. It gets really hard to cut. So a leek, uh, make wonderful soup. And these are chives which um, really are oniony herbs. And when you work with alliums in the onion family, it's nice to use a bunch of different ones, sometimes in the same dish, and you get some really nice layers of flavor there. Now I'm gonna show you just some other random vegetables. These are Romano beans, and these are your everyday green beans. So as you see, these are a lot bigger than these, so if you get impatient trimming green beans, you get a lot more green bean for the amount of work you do with the Romano beans. They also have great flavor, and they're a height of the summer seasonal vegetable, so they have that special appeal as well. Now these, are dandelion greens, just like the dandelions that grow in your yard. They're actually great for your liver and your kidneys. They tend to be kind of bitter. The best thing I ever did with them, I cooked them with some unsweetened cranberry juice, and the bitter and the sour worked really nicely together. This is a parsnip. It looks like a carrot. Uh, you don't want to eat it raw, but it's a great soup stock vegetable. It just gives a lot of depth and sweetness. It's just charred and these are beets. And beets and chard are actually very closely related. You can eat beet greens, and when farmers select for the beet greens that are biggest, and then breed those plants, then eight or 10 plant generations later, you're gonna get chard rather than beets. But if you notice, the colors that the chard grows in are similar to colors that you see in beets. So there you have it, some of the wonders of the vegetable kingdom.